Hi, welcome to Unit 4 on Probability, Random Variables, and Probability Distributions. This is a pretty long unit, but we'll take it piece by piece to try to be as successful as we can. All right, this first video is over topic 4.1, Random and Non-Random Patterns. Pretty much this is an introduction video to everything that we're going to be talking about this unit. So here's the kind of the big concept in this very first quick intro topic. Patterns in data. When we see patterns in data, which means we have variation, right? I mean, when there's patterns, you're going to have variation. Most people may wonder if something non-random is happening. Seeing these patterns doesn't necessarily mean that the variation is not random. I mean, random is random, right? You shouldn't be able to recognize that something is random or not because of the pure fact that it's supposed to be random. So when we do see patterns in data, the real question should be, what is the probability of seeing that pattern? Don't question the pattern being random or not. Think about the probability. So here's two examples to try to explain this. Think about when we're flipping a coin, right? So let's just say you're taking a coin and you start flipping it and you get a head and then you get another head and then you get another head and then you get a fourth head and then you get a fifth head. Now at this point, you're thinking, wow, I, I clearly see a pattern. And then you might be thinking, is this coin fair? Like, what's happening? I got five straight heads, you know? So if we want to answer that question, is this coin fair? Like, is something fishy going on here? What we need to explore is, hey, what's the probability of getting five straight heads, right? Because that can help us understand whether we're seeing something random or not random. You know, what's the probability of getting five straight heads? Well, we got a one half for the first head. We got a one half for the second. We got a one half for the third. We got a one half for the fourth. We got a one half for the fifth. So the probability would be one out of 32. One times one times one times one is one. Five, two times two times two times two times two is 32. So we got a one out of 32, right? One out of 32 is 0 .03125. 0 .03125. Or if you'd prefer, about 3%. So, you know, here's my thought process is it did seem weird that I got five straight heads. I do see a clear pattern, but getting five straight heads does have a 3% chance of occurring. I mean, I'll be honest, 3% chance isn't that low. And I guess that brings up a really important topic that I want you guys to be clear of as we move throughout this whole unit is that when you say something is unlikely to occur, boy, it better be low. All right, it better be really low. I mean, if I have a 3% chance to win the lottery tonight, I'm psyched. I'm playing the lottery. That's pretty good odds. Now, if you tell me that the probability I win the lottery is 0.0000000000000004, okay, well then, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm probably not going to win, right? But the idea of is, is you know, when you, we ask ourselves the question, is getting five straight heads truly random? Well, it does have a 3% chance of occurring which means it's not that unlikely to occur. So I guess maybe the coin I have is still fair. Now, if you're going to sit here and say, no, 3%, that's crazy low. Well, then maybe you do have a legitimate chance to say, hey, maybe this coin is unfair. But the question, you know, the big idea I'm trying to get you to understand is that when you do see a pattern, don't just instantly say, oh, that's weird. That's not right. Think about the probability of seeing that pattern and looking at that probability can actually help you determine if you think it's truly random or not. Because I'll be honest, five heads in a row is weird, but it's not that unlikely that I would think something weird's going on. And that's the thought process that we need to have. Here's another example, driving to school, right? How long does it take you to drive to school each morning? Well, I mean, each day is different, right? It varies. There's variation going on here. Maybe the first day takes you 5.2 minutes, right? If you're actually counting minutes and seconds, you know, it could be 5.2 minutes. Uh, next day, 6.1 minutes. Uh, and the next day, 4.9 minutes. And then the next day, 15 minutes. And then the next day, 3.7 minutes. And again, we could just keep recording for every single thing, right? So if you start to see a pattern, um, you could ask yourself a question. Oh, you know, I wonder, wonder what's going on here. I, I see a pattern of days that are pretty low. And then you know, the idea is that like, you know, okay, you're going to see a pattern, right? I mean, it's random, but maybe it's not random. Like you do live a certain distance from the school. It shouldn't necessarily be random how long it takes you to get to school. It's not like you're literally going to say, well, some days it could take me 25 minutes. Other days it could take me two seconds. I mean, it really shouldn't be random, right? I mean, because, you know, there are variables at play like traffic, weather, red lights, uh, maybe a certain day you're going to pick up a friend. So those things could adjust it. But, you know, what we really want to get out here is, you know, a better question I could ask is, hey, 
what's the probability that it takes you um, less than five minutes to drive to school? So I'm using a D for drive to school. So you know, what's the probability it takes you less than five minutes to drive to school? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I guess I'd have to look at an awful lot of days and see how many of those days it takes me less than five. I mean, if I just look at these five days, um, technically only two of them, 4.9 and 3.7, took less than five minutes. So as of right now, I guess I could say two out of five, but again, that's not really a great probability because it was just based on five trials. And we're gonna explore this idea much, much more. But what I'm trying to get you guys to understand in this very, very short intro video is just, you know, what we wanna understand is that in anything we do in this world, we're going to notice patterns. And those patterns could be random or those patterns could be not, not be random, but we should always be asking ourselves, okay, I'm noticing something going on here. I wonder what the probability of that is. And that's kind of the idea that we're going to be focusing on in this entire um, unit. So obviously this entire unit has a big focus on probability. Every single thing we do, we'll kind of talk about, hey, what's the probability of that? So the bulk of this unit does focus on probability. But after we really have a good understanding of probability, we're going to look at two things. How the outcome of variables can be predicted or quantified with probability, like driving to school, right? Like I can make predictions now based on the you know five years of driving to school, I'm pretty sure I can make a pretty good prediction on if it's gonna take me more or less than five minutes. The second thing that we're gonna take a look at is how some variables can become actually so predictable that we could create models to show the probability of the outcomes of that variable. And you know, these two concepts might be kind of confusing right now, but as we learn more and more and more as this unit builds, we'll definitely be able to understand exactly what I'm talking about. So understand this, you know, what do you want to expect from this um, fourth unit? So, you know, I will be honest, this unit has plenty of terms and definitions that you're going to, you know, you're going to be expected to know and understand. Maybe making note cards could help. But there's also going to be lots of different types of problems that you're going to be expected to solve as well. But here's the thing, regardless of knowing definitions or memorizing this or memorizing that, the best way to solve any probability problem is to think logically. So at the end of each topic, we will explore practice problems so that we can practice how to think logically. Thinking, th thinking through these problems with me is far more vital than memorizing a bunch of definitions. Are you gonna have to memorize a bunch of definitions? Yes, to be honest, you will. But the bulk of the problems are gonna be finding probability. And there is no one step I could tell you that's gonna be able to get you any probability question solved. You need to learn how to think logically. So you really need to watch these videos and pay attention at the end when we look at practice problems because every problem is gonna have some little nuance that teaches you something else that you need to pay attention to. So I need to teach you how to become a logical thinker because if you can think logically, probability is actually quite easy. So that's why we're gonna be looking at lots of practice problems with every single topic so that we could work on that. All right, guys, super excited for this unit and we'll be ready to roll.